Hello everyone, my name is Brian and welcome back to Barb's Fault, where Overseer Barb has tasked me with teaching you everything that I know about Fallout 76. In today's video, we're going to be talking about perk cards and which ones that I think that you should 100% be using to make the game more playable. So keep in mind, this video is not going to necessarily be about damage output or damage mitigation. It's going to be more about quality of life cards, things that you should be using to make the game a little less tedious. And not only that, I'm also going to tell you when you unlock these cards. To make this more digestible, we're going to go from strength, perception, endurance, charisma, intelligence, agility, and then luck. But for those of you who are curious about my damage output cards, every weapon type has cards that increase the damage of those weapons. It sounds super basic and that's because it is. So right now I'm a heavy gunner. I use a plasma caster, the absolute best weapon in the game. And that is affected by the heavy gunner perk cards. So we have heavy gunner level all the way up to three. It's gonna add 20% damage to your weapon. Same thing with master heavy gunner and expert heavy gunner. And it's the same way for, let's say like a bloody commando build. So commando 20%, expert commando 20%, and then master commando an additional 20%. So if you're looking to maximize your damage output, you need to find the cards that are specific to your weapon type. And like I said, there is a card for each type of weapon. If you're like me when I first started playing the game, I found some of the early game mechanics to be rather, let's say, annoying. So here is Brian's big list of number one quality of life perk cards to have. So the thing to keep in mind when you're leveling up these cards is there's not a set level that you then have to hit again to unlock the next star of that card. So when you unlock, let's say, Hard Bargain at level 7, then level 8 and 9, you could upgrade that card all the way to the full 3 stars. You don't need to get to level 10 or 12 or whatever to level that card up. Okay, and so for my fellow heavy gunner builds out there, I also use lock and load and strength. Heavy guns reload 40% faster. So I'm not really willing to let go of the damage cards, you know, like the master heavy gunner, heavy gunner, and expert heavy gunner because those are so crucial to your damage output. But the plasma caster reloads so incredibly slow. So if I could level up this card all the way to three stars, reload heavy guns 60% faster, that would be fantastic, but kind of a must have if you're a heavy gun user. So if you are a commando build and you're using things like a handmade, a combat rifle or a fixer, bandolier at level two, ballistic weapon ammo weighs 90% less. So that's one of those cards that is really gonna mitigate a ton of your problems, basically right off the jump, and you unlock bandolier at level 22. Then we have pack rat, which you unlock at level seven, and at its maximum, the weight of all junk items is reduced by 75%. You know, if you're just going around from dead body to dead body and you're just collecting everything, maybe have this one equipped at all times. But if you're doing something very specific, if you're looking for a lot of a very specific type of junk, and that's like your goal for the whole evening that you're playing, probably pretty good to equip and unequip. If you're like me, I often forget which perk cards that I have equipped and I can just go through and do like an entire farm run and then just think to myself, oh, I didn't swap that out, whoops. So if you're like me, maybe don't do that. <laughs> Then we have Green Thumb, which you unlock at level four, reap twice as much when harvesting flora. Things spoil in your backpack, so good basalt is gonna mitigate a lot of that, but I don't find that when I'm going out to get like Mothman eggs or brain fungus, cranberry or gourd, that I need to collect a ton of that all in one go because like I said, it does expire. So I would recommend Green Thumb if you're just trying to craft XP buffs for you and a couple friends, or if there's something on the scoreboard that is specific to gathering a certain item. So then in Endurance, we have Chem Fiend. Any chems you take last 100% longer and you unlock this card at level 23. This one is super crucial if you're doing like an XP run in West Tech. You take very Mentats and they're gonna last 100% longer. Another pitfall that I find a lot of newer players falling into is they want to immediately put stuff in their strength category to try and mitigate being over encumbered. And I totally understand that. But the thing to keep in mind, there are a lot of other cards that you can use that are not in strength specifically to mitigate that on its own. So I always encourage people to use Radicool. The greater your rads, the greater your strength, max plus five to strength, which you unlock at level 38. So this is not going to give you special points to a lot to strength. It just gives you that as a bonus. So you can see here, I've got strength up to 11. Technically it's at 16, but those five additional points I cannot then use to assign brand new perk cards to my strength slot, if that makes sense. So right off the bat, I feel like we need to talk about the charisma perk cards because you unlock a lot of these very early on. So number one is probably going to be inspirational. When you are on a team with others, gain 50% more XP, kind of your stock standard entry level XP boost card, and you unlock 
unlock this card at level two. So you can get this immediately after leaving the vault. Next up is hard bargain. Buying and selling prices at non-player vendors are now much better. And you unlock this card at level seven. Then the other card in Charisma that is just kind of a must have, especially if you use mutations and you should be. And I'll have a link to a video that I did on how to get said mutations. And then we have strange numbers, which you unlock at level 42. Positive mutation effects are 25% stronger if teammates are mutated too. So most, you know, level 100 and above, or if they have like a friend who is really knowledgeable about the game, they're more than likely going to have mutations. And then another huge one, I think for early game, because you unlock this card at level 13 is scrapper. Obtain more components when you scrap weapons and armor. When I was brand new to the game, the thing that I always ran into was that I did not have enough materials to repair items or to craft new items. So scrapper, you obtain more components when you scrap weapons and armor, and you can find that stuff just in abundance out there in the wasteland. So obviously West Tech is king. You can just go into West Tech, kill a bunch of super mutants, take all of their weaponry, and then scrap all of it and get way more components for it. And some of the more common things you're going to be getting is steel. And let's say you go do eviction notice. A lot of those mutants are going to have a wood based weapon. And in some cases, you can actually get three times the amount of scrap than you normally would if you didn't have this card. So again, you get this card at level 13, super useful card. And then we have chemist. You get double the quantity when you craft chems and you unlock this card at level 34. And it is very useful for me personally when I craft berry mentats. And I use berry mentats when I do XP farming. And so I just want as much as I can possibly get. And so the chemist perk card is an absolute must have. Then we also have different perk cards that increase the base amount that you get when crafting items. And as far as I can tell, there is no clashing there. So you can use chemists with something like super duper and those are going to add to one another. They don't mitigate one another. And then we have weapon artisan, which you unlock at level 40. So this one is huge to slap on when you're repairing items. It's not one that you necessarily need to have on at all times. And honestly, taking up three points for intelligence, bit of a waste of time, but whenever you're crafting or repairing an item, definitely throw this on. So you can repair any weapon up to 200% of its normal maximum condition. So if you find that you're kind of blowing through weaponry very, very quickly, this one's a must have. Then next up is Gunsmith, which you actually unlock at level 11. So having this card leveled all the way up to level five, the maximum amount you're gonna be able to get is that guns break 50% slower and you can craft tier five guns, plants are acquired. And so again, this is another perk card that you might not necessarily want to have this all the way leveled up and in your rotation. And then in agility, we have Ammo Smith, which you unlock at level 34. So you produce 80% more rounds when crafting ammunition. So in very early game, I found that everything was just kind of a bullet sponge. And then up until like level 50 or 60, I feel like that kind of stayed consistent up to that point. So I was just blowing through ammo and it was super frustrating. And if I would have known that I could put on ammo smith to craft ammo for the fixer or for a handmade or something like that, I definitely would have been using it a lot more often. But obviously, the more you play the game, the more you know. And this card will actually pair very well with a legendary perk card called Ammo Factory, which you can unlock at level 50, but we'll touch a little bit more on legendary perk cards here in a little bit. And then maybe another perk card that's a little bit nice to have is Born Survivor. Falling below 20% health will automatically use a stim pack once every 20 seconds. So let's say you're like me and you're a buddy build, meaning that I'm normally below 20% of my maximum health and I'm super irradiated. So it's very helpful if you're doing an event and there's just like tons of damage being thrown around. If you're a bloody build, this will keep you alive in a pinch, but I don't think that its benefits outweigh using different cards. So I don't need to level this up at all. In fact, it becomes less useful if I were to level it up. But I find there are other cards that I want to prioritize before this one. And then in luck, we have Good With Salt. All the way leveled up, food in your inventory will spoil 90% slower. And again, this is a card that you don't need to have equipped at all times. So if I'm running around trying to find Gourd or trying to get Cranberries or something like that to make my food XP buffs, I want to have this one equipped so that way I can run around for longer without having to worry about things going spoiled. And you unlock this card at level nine. Also in luck, we have Super Duper, which you unlock at level 50. When you craft anything, there is a 30% chance you'll get double the results, but there are some very notable exceptions to that rule. So you won't get bulk components like bulk adhesive, fermentable alcohols, holiday gifts, mole miner pails. And then in armor, we have the Assaultron helmet, Chinese stealth armor, Garb of Mysteries, Veil of Secrets, Eye of Ra. And then we have the Secret Service armor, which that one's a really big one because every time you craft Secret Service armor, it automatically comes with a legendary component to it. And same thing with Secret Service Under Armor. Brotherhood Recon armor, Solar armor, Strangler Heart Power armor, Thorn Armor, KD Inkwell Outfits, and then in weapons we have Blast Mine, Blade of Beset, Grant Saber, Voice of Set, Orbital Strike Beacon, Salvage Assault Tron Head, Pro Snap Deluxe Camera. 
But the great thing about this card is that it will stack with things like Ammo Smith, Chemist, and Ammo Factory. So keep that in mind, this card is very situational. Again, since I'm a bloodied heavy gunner and I have the Plasma Caster, I never need to craft ammo for that thing in the first place. So Super Duper will only be equipped if I'm crafting something like chems or ammo for a friend or XP food buffs. Then in our legendary perk cards, I would say it would be worth your time to get Ammo Factory, but you don't unlock your first legendary perk card slot until level 50. And so at one star, produce 50% more rounds when crafting ammunition, and it is well worth your time to level this thing all the way up to five stars, produce 150% more rounds when crafting ammunition. So you sack this with Ammo Factory and you're getting 4.5 times more crafted ammunition. So again, this stacks beautifully with Ammo Smith. And like I said, the point of this video was about perk cards that make the game more enjoyable to play and ways to mitigate some of the more tedious aspects of Fallout 76. But I will be doing a more in-depth video on the damage output and damage resistance cards because I think that's like a whole other large topic to touch on. That's why I didn't touch on it too much in this video. But as I always say, I have a ton of hours in this game, but I am by no means the end all be all say of all the knowledge involving Fallout 76. I'm sure there's gonna be some great comments down below that are referencing perk cards that maybe I'm not thinking of or ones that I maybe didn't think there was a lot of utility in, but I could be wrong. So make sure you check the comment section down below. A lot of great veterans in there giving lots of great advice. But with all that being said, I love you boys. I appreciate you. Maybe consider becoming a channel member. Give me a little bit more latitude to make some cooler and larger projects. I really want to do a whole series on just Fallout New Vegas in general. I've even been touching on Fallout 3 just on my Steam Deck in bed. It's going to be that itch to replay through a very RPG heavy Fallout game. But if you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe. If you haven't liked the video, make sure you like it. YouTube loves those things. Okay, I love you. Appreciate you. Goodbye.